I'm going to show you how to craft the perfect ChatGPT prompt and get the exact results that you want by using the secret prompt formula. The formula consists of role, context, task, format, tone, and example. Let's break them down one by one, starting with the first, which is role. When we say role, we mean the specific identity or expert perspective we want ChatGPT to take on when responding to your request. The role component ensures that ChatGPT provides responses from the perspective of a specific expert, making the output more focused and accurate. So for example, we could type, you are a Michelin-starred chef, or you are a professional math teacher. Both of these give a specific identity to ChatGPT, which ensure that ChatGPT provides responses as an expert in the topic. The next component of the formula is context. In context, we try to describe all the information that is relevant to what we want ChatGPT to do. Providing clear context ensures that ChatGPT understands the scenario or background, which allows it to tailor responses more effectively. For example, we can type, I am an inexperienced cook who wants to make Italian spaghetti for my girlfriend as a surprise. Or, my son has a test tomorrow in school on the Pythagorean theorem, and he is struggling to understand it. This way, ChatGPT knows exactly the situation we are in and can tailor its responses accordingly. Then we have the task. By task, we mean what we want ChatGPT to do. Clearly defining the task ensures that ChatGPT knows exactly what action or outcome we expect. For example, we will type, I want you to give me the ingredients I need to buy and the recipe I need to follow. Or, I want you to explain the Pythagorean theorem to him in a way he can easily understand including a visual representation. This way, we ensure that the AI clearly understands what we want it to do. After the task, we have the format. By format, we mean how the information will be presented by ChatGPT, e.g. step-by-step guide, bullet points, paragraphs, code blocks, etc. For example, we can type, I want the ingredients in the form of a list and the recipe in bullet points, or I want the explanation in paragraphs and I also want a visual representation. So now, ChatGPT knows exactly the structure we want in its answers. The next component of the ChatGPT prompt formula is the tone. By tone, we mean the style ChatGPT will use in its response, e.g. friendly, business-like, formal, casual, etc. Setting the tone guides the overall voice of the response, ensuring it resonates with the audience or situation. For example, we can type, use a simple and instructional tone. Or, for the second example, use a casual, easy-to-understand tone. That way, the AI knows what tone it should use in its answer. And at last, we have the example. Adding an example helps guide ChatGPT towards the kind of response we expect. We can type, here is an example of the type of recipe I'm looking for, and then type the example we have. Or, we can prompt it to explain it like this example, and then give the way we want the explanation to be. This way, ChatGPT has a relevant guide, which helps it respond exactly as we want. So now that we used all the components, let's run both prompts and see the results we are going to get. When I ran our first prompt, this is the response I got. First, it gave us a nice list with all the ingredients we are going to need, and then it gave us all the steps we need to perform in a nice and structured way. For each one, it also gave some key tips that will help us complete them in bullet points. In the end, it provided some additional tips to help complete the recipe easier. This is a very good response, and because I actually sat there and read it, I can confidently say that this recipe does seem to be from a very good chef. It isn't a basic spaghetti recipe. All the instructions are very clear and concise following the format we prompted the AI to use. But let's compare this response to the response we would get if we used a simple prompt that an average person would type, like, give me a recipe for spaghetti. The first thing we notice is that this response is significantly shorter than the previous one. Here we have some basic ingredients and pretty basic recipe with not that detailed instructions. The difference between this one and the one when we were using the prompt formula is huge. The same happened with the other example. I ran the prompt we created with the formula and we got this response. First it gave us the theory of the Pythagorean theorem. Then a section explaining to us practically how it works with an example. Then it explained to us why it is actually useful and when we can use it. And finally, it also gave us the visual representation we asked for, while using simple language that a young teen would easily be able to understand. Now, when I try to prompt that an average person would type like, 
explain the Pythagorean theorem. I got this short response that has a simple and not very detailed explanation at the top and a basic example at the bottom. No visual representation, no detailed explanations, and no simple and easy to understand language. The difference in the results we get when we are using the formula and when we aren't is staggering. But do we always need to use every part of the prompt formula? The answer is no. You only use what's necessary for the problem you're trying to solve. The only component that is truly essential is the task. The task tells the AI what you want it to do. The other components, context, role, format, tone, and example, are optional and depend on what kind of response you're looking for. Now you might ask, if the parts of the formula are not mandatory, what purpose does the formula even serve? The formula should be used as a guide. You don't need to fill in every part, every time. Instead, for each component, ask yourself, does this component help the AI give me a better result? If the answer is yes, then include it. If the answer is no, then move to the next one. This way, your prompt will be exactly as specific as it needs to be. Without you wasting your time typing unnecessary things, that won't help you get a better result. For example, if you want to ask ChatGPT about podcasts you can listen to on your way to work, you will type, I have a 15-minute commute to work. Can you suggest a few podcasts I can listen to during that time? The, I have a 15-minute commute to work, is the context. And, can you suggest a few podcasts I can listen to during that time? is the task. And when we run it, you can see that we get this list of podcasts which we can listen to on our way to work. For this example, do we really need to specify a role, format, tone, or give an example? The answer is no, it's unnecessary. You will just waste your time typing things that don't really have a significant impact on the final result. Remember, we want to maximize efficiency, meaning how can we get the best results possible while typing the least things? Now let's say we have a more complex task, like writing an email to our boss in which we ask for time off work. We simply will go through the formula step by step. First, it's the role. Do we need ChatGPT to act as a specific role? No, we don't. So we are gonna skip this component. Then we have context. Do we need to provide context? Yes, we do. So the email is framed from our perspective. So we will type, I am a full-time employee that works at Google and I have planned a one-week vacation for next month. Then we have task. This is mandatory for every prompt. So we will write, I want you to help me write a professional email to my boss Mark requesting time off for my vacation next month. Then there is format. Do we need to specify the format of the response? Yes, we do need to specify that it's in email format. So, we add, structure it as an email with a clear introduction, body, and closing. Then we have tone. Would specifying the tone help in getting a better result? It would most likely help. So we'll include, and use a business-friendly tone to make it more polite and friendly. And at last, we have the example. Do we need to insert an example here? Not really, since ChatGPT already understands how to draft a standard email. Now let's run this prompt on ChatGPT, and boom. As you can see, we got the exact result that we wanted, an email with a good structure, with friendly and business casual tone, that asks our boss for time off next month for our planned vacation. By going through this thought process, we make sure our prompt is tailored to our specific situation without overcomplicating it. But what if the AI that is performing all these tasks for you is actually conscious? If you want to learn more about that, click on this video right here.